For a function to be differentiable at a point, it has to satisfy um, several conditions. First, condi first condition is that the function has to be continuous at the point. Okay. Does that make sense? Well, if you think about it, if there's a break or discontinuity in a graph, you can't find the slope across a break. So, yeah, the, fuck, the graph has to be continuous at that point for the graph to be differentiable. Okay, that's the first condition. The second condition is that um, it cannot be a sharp corner or turn. So, if there's a sharp corner or turn in the graph, you cannot find the derivative at that point. So, if you think about it, say we have a graph that looks something like this. Now, is it, does the graph have a derivative at this point right there? Is it differentiable at the point? The answer would be no. And uh, the reason is because you have a sharp turn there, and this could be the tangent, or this could be the tangent, or this could be the tangent. They all touch this point. They all touch the graph at one point, namely this point right there. But is that really a tangent line? No. It could be like that, so we don't know. It's un there's an Okay, so I guess you could call it a tangent line, but it's undefined, right? There's more than one tangent line. So that's why the function is not um, differentiable at that point. Because we don't know if it, which one it is. It's like the tangent line could be any of these lines. Okay. And the third condition is that um, it cannot have a vertical tangent. So um, can it have a vertical slope? And not have a... And now, why is that? Well, if we have a vertical slope here, then that's a tangent line. It's a straight line. So what's the slope of a straight vertical line? It's undefined, right? The slope for a vertical line is undefined. And therefore, the derivative of the graph at that point at which it has a vertical line, that derivative is undefined. Okay, so if it satisfies these conditions, then um, the function is most likely uh, differentiable at that point. All right, so uh, no as well. Okay, that's the first part of this lesson. Now, the second part is we're going to come up with a formula that can allow us to explore whether or not a function is differentiable. Okay, so I'm going to show you another form of the derivative equation. So we know that the first form that we've already learned looks like this. Right? Uh, function uh, f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x as a limit. It's a limit as delta x goes to zero. Now there's another way we can write it. Okay, so let's think about this now. Instead of having okay, so we again we have an x and we have say a curve here. Remember when we derived this equation here, we named y x two, so we named x two, we named that x1 plus delta x, right? and then we call it, um, its y component, we call it the function f of x plus delta x. Instead of writing it as x plus delta x, we're going to write x2 as another, another um, variable, c. Now we're going to call this point f of c. Okay, so we have this and this, and if we want to find the slope, we draw a secant line. Now, can we do better? Yeah. We can move these two points closer together. So, what we have is that... Um, okay, so say we want to find the slope at this point. 
then we will have to move this x closer to the c. Okay, so let me write this out first. Okay, so if we're going to move this x closer to the c, then we can express it as the following over here as a limit, right? So the slope that's going to be delta x um, is going to be x1 minus, so it's going to be y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Okay, so that's the slope. And we want to move these two points close together, so we write the limit as follows. x is going to approach c. And this gives us the slope of the curve, or the slope of the tangent line at point C. Now, what's the difference between this and this? Same thing. In both cases, we're moving, we're making delta x smaller. Here, um, delta x is becoming smaller. Here, instead of writing delta x, we're saying that C is getting closer to x, which is the same thing, just in terms of the difference. So, do you see that? In both cases, we're moving, we're moving the two x components closer together. However, though, there is a small difference in this. Can you take the left-hand limit of this? No, right? Because you cannot make, you cannot come to, delta x cannot be zero. Well, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. However, in this one, you can have a both, you can have a left-hand limit and a right-hand limit. And that's why we use this formula to explore differentiability. Because it requires the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit to be equal. So if you come in from the left side, so let's see, the left-hand limit would be what? That means that you're coming from C from the left side, so you would be going this way. And the right-hand limit would mean that you're coming into C from the right side, this way. Right? So if you're doing a left-hand limit, um, you're taking secant lines with this point and a point to the left of it, and looking at how the tangent line changes, or the secant line changes. And if you're doing the right-hand limit, you're taking a point here and say another one here, and you're moving these two points closer together, so you're moving x to c. Okay, and that's the right-hand limit. Okay, so the benefits of using this um, equation is that it requires the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. to exist and be equal. Okay, and when the left-hand limit and right-hand limit do not equal each other, or one of them does not exist, that means that the function is not differentiable. Okay, so I hope I'm explaining this um, clear enough here. So say, here, so the idea is this. Okay, so if we're doing the left-hand limit and we're moving it closer to this, what happens? Um, the secant line would change like this and like this, so eventually it ends up like that, a straight line. Now, if we're doing a right-hand limit, so say x is now to the right side of it, and if we were to draw the secant line, as we move x closer to c, sorry, that's not a very curvy line, as we draw x closer to c, we would expect, so if we draw it closer and closer, once we take the limit and we move x to be virtually on top of c, we would, we would expect the same result from this one and this one. Right? We, we would expect the resulting tangent line to be the same, the slope of the resulting tangent line to be the same for both. And, yeah, right, that, that would make sense. However, when a function is not differentiable, that's not the case, and we'll see why. So, take a look at the next lesson, and I'll go through some actual examples using this, um, using this function, or this equation here. If it's confusing to you a little bit, that's okay. Just look at the next lesson, and hopefully things will clear up. Alright, see you later.